Just a quick note here. I'm going to texture Luna. Luna with a U. I, uh, I wasn't happy with the alpha channel. Putting When I put the full moon on the alpha channel, it ended up way too bright. So I moved the full moon to the red channel. Just to rework these two. And then in the alpha, I put just a mask of the moon. So yeah. Okay, yeah, so... Last time, I used Procedural Sky Master, the one here that's 157 instructions. This time around, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a little cheaper, simpler. So I'm gonna use the Procedural Sky Master 02, the one with 34 instructions. So I'm gonna make a copy of that and put it in my in my package. Uh, <clears throat> the material of you can see I cleaned it up and organized it a little bit. Uh, first and foremost, it's an important change. I wanted to have the moon blocked out by the clouds. So what I did was I found the clouds. I, uh, here was this cloud opacity multiply. I just ran a line out from there. I put it, uh, I inverted it via a 1 minus X and put it into a multiply. I just tied that, as you can see, that's where our, our phase used to used to connect there. I just added that multiply in there. And now, so now the clouds block the sun, the moon and the sun. So there you go, you can see it. The A cloud blockage. Okay. So, yeah, I also, this material had a simpler sun, so I had to rebuild the bloom here. And I redid the, the gradient. See, I wanted uh, a little control over the horizon amount, you know. So that's what these are for. I wanted to, you know, during dusk and dawn, I wanted the horizon to grow and shrink a little. I also simplified this a bit so it lurps. It took this a day or night so I could dynamically lurp it between day and night. I rebuilt the stars here. Right through texture, so it goes through the right channel. Gave it a master tiling. And as you remember, I got a different one through a, a color channel, so I just blended them together. And uh, yeah, there we have it. I mean, it was, I really didn't do all that much. Just rebuilt this in the simpler material, which I'm quite happy with, because as you can see, it's it has 61 instructions. The first one that we made here had 169 instructions. So yeah, 61 is definitely much better. As you can see with the shader complexity here, if we take the original and put it on there, it's much, much brighter. This is an instance of that one. So I can pop the stars up there day or night. So you just run this up. Uh, there, now we've got some stars happening. So right now I'm just going to turn a static switch so I can turn the, the sun on and off, you know, for nighttime purposes. Parameter static switch. So there we go. Save, save often. I've got to tell myself to save, you know. Like in shooters, I gotta keep reminding myself to reload. 
Anyway. So now... I should attach it to this day or night, really, but... For now... Oh, of course, I didn't name it. But anyway, I'm going to go back and name it. And this should turn the sun off. There. The light's still there, casting shadows and whatnot. But there's no annoying sun disk in our sky. Turn what's supposed to be nighttime. So, yeah, that's uh, where we sit now. The major issue, issues that I was looking for are, are taken care of, but the two issues not taken care of are, as you can see, the sun or the moon does not eclipse the sun, and as I'm sure you figured out, the, the moon cannot orbit, it's just stationary right there. So, at this point I'm going to build another version of this also as you can see the stars kind of shine through the moon it's, uh, it's not too big of, big of a deal but I'm going to take care of those three things with a new method I'm going to have to to rebuild it from from the start though but this uh, you know this is a pretty efficient material I'm pretty happy with it I'm putting it out there it should work for most others from here on point, from this point forward, I'm just going to kind of blast through what I'm going to do with this other method, just for the few people out there who would like to have an eclipsing moon or a moon that drifts across the sky. Um, yeah. So here we have that. <clears throat> so here we are back in 3DS Max. Like I said, I'm just going to blast through this. Uh, so we're going to create a couple more well first I'm going to create another sky dome another sphere and I'm going to make it 180 or I guess I'm going to create a copy of that called moon and I'm going to make it just smaller I'm talking 179 now I'm going to Convert it to an editable poly. I'll delete all but one. In fact, scratch that. I'm going to, before I I'm gonna give it more segments so that it'll be a bit smaller. And smaller than that. It's more like it. There. Now I'm going to delete all but one. I'm going to flip that one, and I'm going to UV map it. It only needs one UV map channel. And, uh, see it has its pivot point right where it needs to fit perfectly inside this sphere, and we can orbit it around, move it, and it'll eclipse the sun, and all that. So, next I'm going to UV UV map this with a couple of channels and I'm going to export both of these into UDK so I'll see you there in a second okay so I've imported the meshes here we go you can see with the moon dome the UVs I did it the same as the last one these three channels I didn't bother to put a fourth channel on it and I made another material from scratch here. Basically, it's just a really, really stripped down version. It's just color gradient and the sun with some bloom around it. And that's it. Copy and pasted from the last one. Now, we need to type in sky here. Do a search through all assets back to where we okay. This time we're looking for procedural sky foreground clouds. Right there. Now this time we don't need to make a copy. We just need to utilize this. 
Okay, this is the moon material. I uh, just got some color, desaturated it, added it in with the full moon texture, and opacity masked it because it's a masked material. That's what we got there. I added some color so it doesn't, you know, otherwise it ends up all black and really is kind of an ugly thing. We have here, maybe you can see from here, we got a, a we got a cloud dome, one dome for the clouds. That we, we got the moon here. And a sky dome. So two domes. And a little orbit moon here. So, yeah. This more or less mission accomplished. I mean, it doesn't look that good. It doesn't look too bad, but it does eclipse the sun. And it does orbit around. You're going to have to kind of tweak with... Uh, clouds a bit. You can see I added a little bit of color to the moon. But there is one thing of note. If you look at shader complexity here, it is crazy expensive. Well, some of that's my, my what is that? My water? Anyway. But yeah, so That's a, a working method for if you wanted to get an eclipse or a, an orbiting moon. I'm going to continue to tweak with these things and hopefully get back to you with another video before too long. Another way. So, I'm going to, I'm going to bid you farewell for now. Wish you luck on your moon mooning <laughs> and uh say thanks for watching you know and have a good one stay tuned for more interesting things <laughs>